Oh, too many projects. Um, <laughs> I've, got, I've got my old ham radio here on the bench. Um, I bought this thing, um, oh geez, a couple of years ago now. Um, I bought it as a, a parts thing. Uh, it didn't transmit, it didn't receive, it didn't do anything. And I've got it to the point now where, um, oh, I had it to the point where it was receiving really, really well, but uh, single side band was a bit distorted on it. Um, it does have good finals and everything. It just it just needs some help. So um, I just got done replacing all the capacitors in this thing. Um, 116 electrolytic capacitors. Um, I bought a kit off of eBay. Some guy up in Canada sells them about 40 bucks and gives you a nice Nichicon uh, capacitor. So uh, it took me a full two days to replace all the capacitors in this darn thing. Um, and it's receiving really, really well now. Um, I'll probably have to go through and align it um, and uh, probably adjust the bias on the final amplifier to get it transmitting right again. But anyway, that's not the point of this video. Um, it just explains why there's stuff on the bench here. Um, I still am waiting for uh, a couple parts for my, um, my Z80 board here. Um, I need the... Um, uh, UART and I need the ROM. So those are in the mail somewhere. They both are com coming from China. I did receive the RAM chip. I did get a 6 megahertz uh, oscillator from the junk store. Um, and so we're, we're looking good there. Okay, but that's not what this video is about. Um, this video is about a, uh, a brand new board and um, I kind of um, had a weakness for um, 8085 microprocessors. Um, like I said, I, I grew up with 8080s. Um, that's why I, d I did the MSI uh, videos. Um, always was really, really fond of the 8080. Um, but it was difficult to use. And when the 8085 came out, it was a very, very simple 5 volt part. It was just really, really nice. And uh, the instruction set was the same as it, the 8080. So I really did a lot of work with 8085s back in the in the 1980s. Um, I built a lot of single board computers for controlling robotics and um, uh, auto automation equipment for factories and stuff like that. Um, so the 8085 was a real workhorse and then I, I used uh, my knowledge of that to design a bunch of 8051 products um, uh, that, were, that were put into products. Um, I designed a little bit of 68000, um, but I never touched Z80s, so Z80s um, are nice for kits and stuff, uh, but I never did learn the opcodes and, and the assembly language and stuff. I just haven't gone there. But my first passion was always the uh, 8085. Like I said, I've designed a lot of boards in the past. Um, I've always thought about building a little single board computer that used the, uh, the 8085 and uh, just never got around to it. Um, so, uh, poking around on the web, um, I was surprised um, about a, a particular board. I forgot to bring it, just a second. Uh, this is the board. Uh, let me zoom in on it. Uh, this is a 8085 single board computer, a nice small one. Um, and it's designed by the same fellow who did the Zeta board, uh, Sergei um, Molinov. Um, and um, uh, I think that's his name, right? Oh, the Molina. Uh, oh, uh, Kiziev. Sergey Kiziev. Um, his website uh, talks about Molinov, so I'm not sure if he has two names or how they're associated, but uh, Sergey uh, is the guy who did the, uh, the Zeta board, and he's got a website. Um, uh, I encourage you to go on his website. He's a great engineer, he's designed lots of stuff. Um, and uh, he had a bunch of 8085s, I guess, laying around and wanted to do a single board computer also. So this is the one he came up with. And uh, it's very, very similar to the board that I wanted to design. So here it is. I don't need to do any work. And with um, the uh, China factories building 10 boards for $2, that's what I did. I built 10 boards. <laughs> so thank you, Sergey. Um, it has an 8085, it has ROM and RAM, and it has a UART. Um, and it has the uh, latch to uh, demultiplex the address, um, so it uses a, a, a 573 chip. And then it needs some glue logic to handle a few of the handshakes, and so it uses a, uh, uh, not a GAL uh, 
22v10, it's now a 16v8. Um, so that goes here. Um, and he also threw in a couple of other things, which I didn't catch the first time I looked at the board. Um, it, you know, it has the UART serial, it has the Max 232 chip for, uh, for that. But he also includes a, um, a non-volatile RAM uh, uh, supervisor chip, the, the DS1210, the same one he used on the Zeta board. So that's kind of a nice addition. He shows how you strap, strap that out if you don't want to use it. Um, and I probably won't use it. I'll probably strap it out. But, um, yeah, so these, these came in the, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, these, these came in the mail today. Um, they look pretty nice. Uh, thought we'd look a quick, quick look at the schematic. Um, we have, uh, make sure I get this in frame. So we have the CPU. Um, it has its own internal crystal oscillator. Uh, so you just have an external crystal. And the load resistors are dependent on what type of uh, uh, material the CPU is made out of. If it's a MOS device or a, or a CMOS device. Um, a standard reset circuit. Here's the demultiplexer for the address lines. Um, there's some pull-ups and pull-downs on little SIP packages. Um, let's, uh, let's go up a bit. Uh, we have the ROM. We have the RAM. I, I like this RAM. I don't like the RAM that's used on... Uh, on this board, it's this really weird, uh, weird package. I'm used to the the big wide uh, uh, RAM chips, so uh, it uses an uh, 62 to 256. Um, so it's a 32 32 32 split. Um, I think you can configure it a few ways, maybe. Um, and then we have at the bottom the uh, serial port. And uh, here's the um, the GAL 16v10. Uh, it handles some uh, address decoding for the chip selects, and uh, it also handles uh, some some clock generation. Uh, it does. It has a divider circuit in it, so it generates the um, the UART timing from the main crystal. So uh, uses a 6.144 megahertz crystal. That's probably cleverly chosen. So when it divides down, it gives you a correct uh, clock for the um, for the UART. Um, so yeah, this looks uh, this looks pretty nice. Um, it has a, it has the jumpers here. You can jumper it for different ROMs, uh, 27C128 or 256 or 28C256, which is the same one as this one, so that's good. Uh, and a 29256, not sure what that is. Um, and then the UART has strapping for different baud rates, uh, 1200, 9600, 2400, and 19.2. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, so, where'd that board go? Here it is. Um, so the back side of the board tells you some about the uh, jumpers, uh, the baud rate jumpers and the ROM configuration jumpers. Um, yeah, looks pretty nice. So uh, that will be coming up. Um, I'm thinking um, of trying to port uh, my monitor program onto this board. Um, and I'm trying to think about <laughs> getting getting the ambition to do it is uh, port uh, Microsoft Basic to this board, this D80 board. Um, it currently runs Tiny Basic. I'm not a big fan of Tiny Basic. I do not like Tiny Basic, um, and um, uh, would like to put Microsoft Basic on here and and make that into a, a board. We'll see if I have time for that. I got like I said, I've got too many projects uh, and not enough time. So. Uh, Got signed up for some more consulting, so uh, that will that will slow me down as well. Um, but anyway, still having fun. <laughs>